Ready? Okay, this is Peter O'Rourke. I am the executive director of the NAPSIG Foundation. Uh, this is the NAPSIG Foundation's virtual training session on the U.S. national grid. Our two presenters today are uh, Xenophon Geekus, also known as Yo Geekus, a uh, fire captain from Los Angeles uh, City Fire Department, and Tom Geekus, also a fire captain from the Los Angeles City Fire Department. Uh, Tom and Yo were the primary uh, authors and the leads for the NAPSIG Foundation's effort on the U.S. national grid. Uh, so I now turning it over to Tom and to Yo. Thank you, Peter. Uh, this, guys. this is Yo. Uh, welcome. Uh, don't need to elaborate any further. Uh, we are also happen to be uh, both of us uh, part of the Southern California leadership team for the NAPSIG Foundation as well. So. Uh, Maybe we can spur some of the audience to start participating in that as well. Good morning. Good morning, guys. So uh, right off the get-go, I acknowledge uh, a few folks. Uh, of course, you, you met uh, Peter's advocacy and, and uh, leadership for uh, GIS and public safety uh, community is uh, very commendable. I want to thank you very much, Peter, for the opportunity here as well. Uh, it's a very important subject. Uh, just the issue of location uh, is crucial to just about everything we do. So uh, thank you very much for your, your leadership here. Uh, this, the, the guide itself uh, wouldn't be po possible without the, the partnership between NAPSIG, uh, DHS, FEMA, and NISJIC, and uh, Peter is the one that uh, was responsible for putting that together. So again, thank you. And of course, uh, all the folks that have uh, helped put this together, we've got a pretty good diverse group of uh, very talented and dedicated people that have uh, come together uh, to formulate where we're at uh, in this guide. So uh, without a doubt, a thank you there. And then, of course, to the, uh, the folks that have logged in today, uh, one of the things we want to accomplish is get some feedback from you. So we very much appreciate your time. Uh, what we want to accomplish, as I mentioned, is get some uh, get some feedback, get the discussion, and make sure we've got enough stuff here in the guide and we've covered all the bases. And, and uh, please feel free to chime in on the chat and QA uh, with anything you have, and Peter will take care of that. Uh, we want to discuss uh, the guide framework, and we'll go through that quite a bit today. And then, uh, of course, the, the background and philosophy of the guide itself, how we, how we uh, approach this project. Uh, first off, the, the, uh, the look and feel of the guide itself, uh, we've modeled after another guide that NAPSIG uh, sponsored, uh, the Quick Guide for Building a GIS. And you can find that on our NAPSIG website. Uh, if you'll notice, it, it's, it's very clean, it's, it's not heavy reading at all, and it's non-technical. And, and the USNG guide that we're talking about today is a non-technical document. Uh, and we want to make this uh, very easy for our reader uh, to get involved in using the, the USNG and understanding its value. Uh, in addition, we want to we raise awareness of, of our target audience. We're, we're looking at you know, safety leaders, police chiefs, fire chief types, along with executive level decision makers from the state and the county and the city governments and, and whatnot. And in that audience, if they're not aware of, of the USNG or, or the issues that it helps solve, uh, the number one uh, goal here of this, again, non-technical document is to raise the awareness of this and all the many benefits that the U.S. national grid can provide. Tom will, Tom's going to elaborate on that a little bit later. Uh, in addition, uh, probably one of our, our uh, key, key tenets here is that there's already great work that's been done on the guide. We, we are not going to do any more work, the guide, excuse me, the grid. Uh, we're not going to do any more work developing the grid itself. That's been done. It's been done for a lot of years. Uh, and really hats off to the folks that, that have participated in developing the U.S. national grid. It, it is really a problem solver. And we, our, our goal here is to point people to all of that wonderful work. Uh, a lot of uh, agencies have implemented the U.S. national grid. They've done a tremendous amount of work. We want to point uh, our readers to that work. And again, we're not going to invent any, anything when it comes to the U.S. national grid. Uh, we're looking for a marketing tool more than anything else. Get their attention, point them to all that great work. So uh, here's the guide itself, uh, all the little components. We're going to walk, uh, walk through this today. Uh, the first thing, of course, in the, in the guide or any book is an introduction. Uh, for that's the hook. If, if our folks aren't aware uh, of, of the U.S. national grid, we're, we're going to make them aware. There's clearly, clearly a use and a need for, uh, better yet, a need for the grid. Uh, if you look at some of these headlines, 
kind of created them. I created them from real stories. Uh, and believe not, these things are just within the last few months in 2013. So there's clearly a need to want to hook our readers, uh, that the target audience do that. They're, they're probably experiencing these problems in their own agencies or the agencies they work with, so they'll hook them. Uh, if you can see there from lat long miscommunication to uh, you know large disasters like Katrina, where, where there are no visible signs of where people are. The, the, the U.S. National Grid really helps us out there. So uh, that that is the number one goal of that the opening part of our grid is to just, just hook readers. I'll go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Good morning, everybody. This is Tom speaking. I apologize. Joe and I sound quite a bit alike, so uh, I will be speaking now for the next couple of slides here. Uh, basically, as Joe mentioned, the, we tried to keep the guide uh, pretty light reading, but also uh, put it in a framework where the reader can uh, follow along easily and, and know what they're in store for, but also as a, uh, a marketing tool for those who are using it within their agency. Um, they can uh, pick up where the sections are and, and help teach within their agency to uh, advocate the U.S. national grid. Uh, the first couple sections of the, the guide itself, uh, it, it's composed of six actual main topics. Uh, those three are how to use the guide, the overview, and the U.S. Uh, NG basics. Uh, component on how to use it, we really identify the target audience and uh, for the reader to understand what this guide or who this guide is targeting. Uh, you'll mention the uh, executive decision makers, uh, emergency responders, practitioners. Uh, a lot of people using the, the grid already may be within their agency in one of those uh, fashions and, or positions, and they can use this guide to uh, promote in their agency and provide it to the different levels that this uh, guide uh, targets. Also, the first part of it also just, uh, breaks down what the framework is. Uh, the different components and uh, the, the guidance steps uh, gives them a brief overview of what's or for them. Uh, moving to the next component is the overview of the U.S. national grid. Uh, gives a real brief description of history and what the status is within uh, at the national level. Um, not too in-depth, uh, not real technical, but just what it's about, uh, how it came to be, uh, you know, referencing the UTM and uh, military grid reference zones, and also the work of the uh, FGDC. Also talks about the agencies that are uh, promoting it or developed it and are using it within their, their products. So, for example, the NGA and, and uh, NSARC there actually put it in their grading procedures, as well as USGS, the products they're producing or promoting the U.S. Signal grid. So we, we reference that in the guide and, and provide the uh, reader with uh, links to those different sites for the documents that uh, are being produced and the product being produced. Uh, the next one is just the basics of the grid, how to read the court, um, you know, description of the grid zone uh, and the 100-meter uh, square, what it, what it represents, and then what the digits represent. And then we move into, you know, how to read, a, how to read the map. Really simple, nothing too in-depth. Uh, read, then up. Uh, I apologize, my screen's a little bit ahead of yours, but we, we then move into the bulk of the, the guide, and that is uh, the guidance steps. Uh, guidance steps are five uh, steps that we feel are, are crucial in the development or implementation of the, uh, the grid within your agency or organization. Uh, one being governance, uh, two being standard operating procedures, three is uh, training and uh, uh, education, uh, four is your map products, and then te technology would be the last one. So. We walk the reader through each one of these uh, areas, uh, and we provide them uh, best uh, best examples, uh, thoughts, and considerations that are really necessary for effective implementation. So, in governance, uh, we want to make sure the organization uh, really provides clear direction to their uh, their constituents. Uh, they want to make sure they update their policy manuals. Um, they need to incorporate the grid within their uh, organizational publications. Uh, and also provide visibility to not only internally but externally to their industry partners and citizens. So we really uh, advocate uh, within the guide to uh, uh, stress that as a need for, to ensure uh, successful implementation. Uh, we also uh, look to 
ensure that the agencies doing this are uh, incorporating their requirements in the MOUs and MO MOAs uh, and mutual aid agreements that they're signing with their neighbors and partnering agencies, uh, as well as promoting it uh, in the commercial sector as well as much as they can, uh, volunteer groups and uh, the public that they serve. Uh, we move into the next section, and uh, so we also, within the GetSelf, we, we provide links to best uh, best practices, uh, documentation that they do as a uh, uh, exemplar uh, for, and then for visibility stuff, we include uh, guides or sites of existing agencies that have adopted it, uh, one being Minnesota. Uh, they are applying these same principles that we're stressing in the one being visibility, uh, very clear, uh, no doubt that they've adopted it, and basically how they're doing it. So agencies looking to implement it can you know, go to websites and go to this documentation for governance and, and get a real good uh, head start on things. As Joe mentioned, a lot of the work's been done. We're just trying to compile it in one guide in a real user-friendly uh, approach. The next area is uh, standard operating procedures. Uh, you know, the future of uh, 911, is uh, we need to incorporate it into the dispatch. Uh, we need to make sure that we develop and promote uh, operating procedures so that we ensure a consistent application so the guide really stresses uh, really integrating it into your operating procedures, uh, developing your maps uh, as one of the base elements that you're going to need to do uh, to ensure a successful implementation. Uh, here we provide also links to uh, best case examples, uh, best business practices. Uh, Florida, uh, another leader in the in the grid, uh, they've adopted some uh, map products that, that teach the GIS and teach the uh, agency managers how to read the grid and how to implement it on a map book. Also, they're incorporating into the FOGS, and it's it's uh, essential that we incorporate it in all the tools that, that responders use so that they understand when they come across it. The next one we, we stress is tracking. Uh, really going back to the basics and making sure that our training objectives uh, support the organizational level uh, we included in all the exercise, uh, exercises that go on out there, various agencies. Um, and we, we provide links to low cost uh, tools that they can use to, with the training exercises. Uh, we have the map viewers that different uh, agencies have put up that uh, support the grid. Um, but again, really stressing in the guide that for the uh, users to understand what the grid represents, uh, how to use it and read the map, uh, how to measure distance, things like that, and the proper terminology uh, is stressed in this section. We provide links to uh, these documents here, and uh, they're available at the end of the, uh, the guide itself. Uh, so there's, there's very good direction on where they can go to get this information. Uh, next one is uh, themselves, really stressing uh, building map books. The, the, the maps that you do provide uh, need to include the grid, and that's what we're telling the reader. You can't uh, implement this without putting it into your, uh, your operation day-to-day uh, -day as well as extended uh, multi-agency operations. Uh, we want to incorporate it not only uh, in our operations, but also the public, so uh, as we, we move along into those calls that we don't have a clear address, the grid can help support uh, finding the, those people in need. So these, these are examples of what's going on out there, and we've included them in the guide as well. Uh, we've provided examples of uh, map atlases that are used, uh, or atlases, and then also the uh, how to construct uh, map books, and then uh, products that have been developed that include map books uh, content. So we include all that material, uh, again, in the reference section, along with in the section of the guide itself, they have a link. Uh, moving on to the last part of the, uh, the direction is the technology. There's a lot uh, of consumer-based products that are uh, using the grid. You can download them to your smartphone. Um, you can use apps to convert uh, on the fly uh, between uh, lat long and the like, grid. So uh, a lot of good stuff's been going on. We're just trying to compile that in this section and give the leaders uh, a place to go and, and see where they can uh, start to implement it on the technology side. Uh, it also includes, a lot of this blends into the various sections of, of guidance. 
uh, we uh, this here from Florida. Uh, they've implemented it on their map viewer. So you can use this free tool uh, when you're implementing it. We try to give the, the reader a direction to do that so they're not uh, having to uh, wait till their system's built before they actually go teach their, uh, their personnel or, or the public. So they have, have that. Um, this is just the, uh, the USGS viewer. It supports the grid as well, so we want to put the, the readers to the uh, best case exam examples and practices out there so they don't feel like they have to start from scratch. Um, that, that ends the guidance steps, and then we get into the reference material, reference links. Uh, very clean, uh, very basic. We're trying to uh, group the reference links, the target audience groups, so that they uh, understand what that link will uh, get them to and what it'll be referring to. Uh, here's a couple of uh, links to the agencies that we link documentation to. Uh, got to give off to uh, those states are Florida, Missouri, Minnesota, and North Carolina. They've done some really great work uh, in accessing some stuff and actually implementing it in that fashion. Um, and of course, we got ES at the bottom. They've been very uh, supportive of, of pushing the, the grid in its implementation. We provide links to most of what they have out there. Um, we're always looking for if uh, we, we can get feedback today on things that we might have missed. It'd be great. Um, and then uh, basically a thank you work group participants. Uh, we had, again, you mentioned a lot of uh, talented people with a lot of passion who, who brought the grid to where it is. And um, this isn't to recreate anything. It's actually to just bring it together uh, in a usable format for uh, the people that are thinking or want that we need to have implemented. So there's a list of some of the members that have participated in the work group. Uh, with that, uh, be open to uh, questions. Thanks, Tom. And, you know, uh, appreciate the um, the feedback. Um, one question we have is: uh, many folks uh, use ArcGIS Server. Is there an app to add um, spatial websites to perform perform a touch screen and see a pop up of the national grid coordinates? I don't know if you guys can answer that. It might be an Esri question. Did you say touch screen? Yes. So it's uh, you can see the question from Phil. Uh, basically, I'll read it directly. Many of us use ArcGIS Server. Is there an app to add to our spatial websites to perform a touch screen and see a pop-up of the national grid coordinates? Uh, yeah, I, I'm not I'm not skilled enough to answer the server question, but the touch screen is that's a hardware issue. Uh, and then yeah. was was. Uh, so I can I can ping Esri on that and see if I can get an answer from them and get back to you. Um, By the way, Peter, I, I can I'm not seeing anything. My panel. Okay. Does, but yeah, that was in the chat section, so you would uh, you might have to look on Tom's. No, um, no we're in the chat. I'm not uh, we're not seeing that. Um, well, the grid is supported on on the servers. You're talking about just. Should you be able to touch the screen and, and bring it yeah, up? I think, I, I think the touch screen, we might be putting too much emphasis on the touch screen. Really, it's more of, of an app. That is, that, that is definitely a hardware issue. Uh, and there's plenty of, plenty of really good hardware out there for touch. Um, great. Uh, we have one question. Um, uh, Nanvi, I, I, I can't. Um, uh, answer whether or not we can bring U.S. National Grid to Google Earth. Um, if you have uh, if you have any um, folks at Google Earth you'd like us to talk to, we certainly would be happy to make a, a presentation and a pitch to them. But we don't have uh, any particular sway on uh, Google or, frankly, anyone else. Uh, but we're, we're happy to talk to Google about this if you'd like us to. Um, Hold on a second. I'm getting a bunch of questions now. Uh, Jason, uh, I don't think Jason had a question, but Jason Dolph was just mentioning that um, they're trying to get educated on the national grid because they're beginning the stages of implementing it in their state. So that's great, Jason. Uh, we've had a few questions about where we can find the grid, uh, or sorry, find the implementation guide. 
Um, and as I think Yo and Tom mentioned early in the presentation, the guide is still in draft form. Part of our session today was intended to get some feedback from you all uh, so that we can um, see whatever, whatever um, issues were missed or maybe we didn't get 100% correct or things that you'd like to see differently in a presentation um, setting. Uh, so the, this, uh, the implementation guide is in final form. Uh, we will take whatever feedback we get today, and then we will um, final final it, and then it will be made available for download on the NAPSIG website. Um, once it is available on the NAPSIG website, you are uh, welcome to take it and use it however you see fit, share it with whomever you want, um, and, and it's, it's uh, free to download and free to share. Um, a question from Cory Booker was, could this uh, U.S. National Grid be taught to GIS students in the high school level? Um, the question uh, certainly uh, would be yes. Um, NAPSIG doesn't do that, but you could use this implementation guide to uh, help with that. Um, we are, Peter? Yes. This is, this, um, we, we are um, looking at a, a taking existing curriculum and, and bringing it down to the uh, high school level because there are, we, we found in our, our neighborhood we do have these technology academies within the uh, high schools and it, uh, it leads to them understanding that uh, you know, GIS is, is becoming prevalent if it already isn't one of the leading technologies, but that, uh, we are trying to do that out in Los Angeles, so uh, that's a great question or great uh, feedback there. Uh, it is. Uh, so a couple more questions. Um, can I get uh, the grid as a shape file? Which I don't think. Yeah, they have. Uh, I mean, it's... go ahead, Tom. You want me to? Yeah, there's links on the the guide itself that will bring you to those uh, that have already implemented. There's some areas that uh, I don't know if it's fully. Been Yet, but I know that we've included uh, that and it's uh, how to within Esri's tools to do that. Because uh, I know uh, Talbot Brooks uh, and Tom Terry and Randy Knipple are uh, really uh, built extensively in their neighborhoods. So there is a link guide for that. Great. Uh, we did get an answer to one of Phil's questions, um, that at least a partial answer, Phil. Uh, the touchscreen may work with Leaflet API using the Esri FCS server add-on for Leaflet. Um, Leaflet provides touchscreen interaction controls. So, Phil, hopefully that helps you. Um, Tammy Rhodes asked a question about using U.S. National Grid in Seminole County, Florida. Um, Tammy, there are plenty of folks in Florida who have just great experience with National Grid. Um, uh, Richard Buttwright, Rand Napoli, Al Stutt, you've got plenty of folks in Florida who can help you. Uh, if you want to reach out to us, we can point you in the right directions for sure. Um, let me see some more questions. Uh, has there been an implementation where the U.S. National Grid is used as the map book page reference? Um, and you, do you know that? You mean, uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, say that. Read that question again or say that question again? We are seeing the questions now, Peter. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yes, it has. That's kind of the uh, you know, the value or the, the benefit of the grid or one of them is that uh, it, it seems almost across the jurisdiction. So if you can get with your partnering uh, neighbors and build out the grid map books, then you will have uh, your map book page will be the book page in essence. So it just depends. I think, uh, uh, again, Randy and, and Castillo, they've implemented it in their areas and they've built out some really nice map books. So we can point them in that direction. Um, okay, and then the question is, will our implementation guide clearly explain the difference between UTM and National Grid and its advantages over lat long and other systems? Uh, the reading that this person has done on the National Grid website has only confused him more. So, um, Tom and Neary, do you want to address that, whether or not, one, how it's covered in the guide, but also do you want to just help answer that question? It, Peter, I, I, I could only, your voice cut out. Could you repeat the question? Because I, I think we can't answer that. 
Okay, will the guide clearly explain the difference between UTM and the national grid and its advantages over lat long? Uh, with regards to lat long, absolutely. Probably the number one uh, culprit of language issues and miscommunication is the, the translation of lat long to its various formats. And then, of course, you know, which, which format are you telling me when you give me the number? Uh, so yes, we're, we're emphasizing that part very, very, very heavily. As far as the difference between UTM and, and National Grid and the, you know, the two additional letter add-on, we're not real technical uh, in, the, in the document. Uh, Tom showed you in the basics, he showed you the, the parts off the FGDC site. And in, as far as technical, we're not getting technical. But it, we explain um, you know, the U.S. National Grid and what the, the base component uh, if you go to that website, you'll see uh, the, addi the addition of the two additional letters from the, the UTM to the, the U.S. National Grid. That helps. Uh, yeah, it does. A couple other answers to some questions, um, in particular uh, regarding Esri and Google. Uh, <clears throat> so um, I don't remember who asked this, but. Uh, this is from Randy Knippel, who was on the working group. Um, Esri has a web map service to display the USNG with labels. Dynamic USNG cursor location JavaScript is available. A Google map mashup to display USNG exists, and a second generation is being developed by Shared Geo. Um, so hopefully that answers that question. Yeah, I was going to say, if, if the readers uh, don't have that panel up, uh, Randy's, Randy's chiming in with uh, some very good, uh, very good input there on, on the questions. Yeah, so, and, and I, I guess Randy sent uh, the UTM is, is just so you can, um, we can answer that one. Uh, USNG, as Randy notes, is, is a convenient notation. USNG is a convenient notation of UTM. Um, they're directly related. Uh, so I think one of the things that really is, is, is apparent with some of the questions we're having here is that U.S. National Grid is uh, new still to many people. Um, it doesn't, uh, um, uh, it's not something that is being required or mandated, but it does provide different um, and, and from many perspectives a lot more easy to use and clear system for location. Um, so please take a look at the um, guide once it's published. If you have questions about the guide or questions uh, about U.S. National Grid and you'd like to provide input prior to the guide being available, um, we, you can email Tom and Yo. Um, their email address for this particular issue um, is, I'm trying to find it right now, uh, Yo. I'll get it. I'll get it. U.S. G dot guide at gmail dot com. Okay, so again it's USNG dot guide at gmail dot com. And so another few weeks, uh, two, three weeks at the most, we're gonna keep this open before we have to send it to final publication. Um, but if there are things that we've missed or things that you'd like to see um, uh, in, included in the National Grid Implementation Guide, please do let us know. Um, it is something that we're uh, um, uh, really firmly believers of here at NAPSIG Foundation, and we'd like to help uh, push it out uh, to as many folks as we can. Um, you know, as some folks have pointed out, U.S. National Grid is not mandated federally. Uh, several states have adopted it and have required its use. So it is coming in many ways, shapes, or forms. So the familiarity with it is important. Uh, Tom and Yo, do you have any other questions or comments? Uh, Peter, uh, we're, we see a question here from uh, Patricia about a federal requirement. Um, it, it depends on how you look at that. It, there is some federal requirements for different agencies that are participating with federal agencies. For for example, on our our USAR team, our federal USAR team, we're required to use the grid in uh, bringing in coordinates, and, and, and the NGA is uh, putting it in their map products as, as uh, one of their standards. So a requirement, we, the requirement is we need to understand it. Uh, 
our agency, some agencies may not uh, promote it or advocate it, but if their resources go to incidents or involved in incidents at a federal level, they should expect to see the U.S. national grid used. So um, that helps answer the question. There are some agencies at the federal level that are promoting it heavily and are trying to get everybody on board. Yeah, and I guess that's the root of the issue is, is it's not universally required, um, but in order to um, in, in order to make at least it familiar with people who, who don't currently use it or don't plan to implement it, this guide is intended as some background. More important for those who do intend to use it and are required to use it, this guide will be a very useful tool for how you get started. Um, so that being said, I think we will close the um, training session today. Uh, you do have the, the email address to reach out to Tom and Yo for any input or guidance or questions. Again, it's usng.guide at gmail.com. Uh, we look forward to receiving any questions or comments, and please expect this guide to be published uh, on the NAPSIG website uh, as early as uh, early September. Hopefully around early to mid-September will be published. And again, it is uh, free to download, and we encourage you to share it with whomever you'd like. Thank you again to um, Tom and to Yo and to the larger working group for all that they did to put this together. Thank you very much for all of you for participating in these uh, seminars. Uh, we we derive, derive most of these activities from input we've received from you. so. Um, please keep providing us input and please letting us know um, if there are topics that you'd like us to cover. And without further ado, that will conclude this training session. Thank you. Thank you, Peter.